So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another book review of The Shield Dude on a Car. So it's been a while since we have done shielding with a book. And as you can see, I, I don't have a book in my hand because I found a loophole. Uh, I listened to an audio book recently, and it's uh, the book for uh, Derek Wibley from Psalm 41. And here's the book. It's called Walking Disaster, My Life Through Heaven and Hell. And this is a book that I know that it's going to come out, uh, it was going to come out a few weeks now or months because Derek Wibley has been doing some shorts on YouTube and he's telling like little short stories that are not in the book. And all of the stories that he was using in like the shorts were like funny, antic, like antics from the road. So I thought that this was going to be another like rock book where it's going to talk all about like you know like like doing drugs and partying and it's going to be all like that but i was very surprised when it actually came out so yeah this is the cover uh i don't have it physically but i listened to the audiobook so this book uh is a memoir uh, for derek and he focuses on like his whole career with Psalm 41. He also talks about his childhood. He talks about, you know, there's there's like funny stories here and there, but there's also a very underlining serious story about basically a young 16 year old musician, in this case, Derek, who was taking advantage of by his former manager, Greg Norris. Uh, who had another punk band in Canada. So a lot of the book focuses on that part. So I was caught off guard because I thought because of all the previews and videos that it was going to be like more like lighthearted, that it was going to be all about partying. But you know what? I'm glad that he saved that stuff till the book dropped because uh, honestly, I was quite surprised. I didn't know that. He went through all that. And when you listen to Psalm 41's music, it's very like uh, a lot of it is very like upbeat. And uh, it seemed like it, it didn't seem like the type of music that was written by someone who was going uh, through grooming and abuse. So, yeah, the uh, the book starts when he's, uh, you know, like he's a young boy and his mother, he never knew his biological uh, mother and they grew up poor. So he tells stories of how he was growing up poor and, but he didn't know he was poor and how he gravitated like to rock music in the nineties. Uh, he really started listening to a lot of like the nineties bands. In the beginning, he talks about Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins, but then there's a focal point where he focuses more on punk. And he said that the band that really got him into punk was No FX and how Fat Mike was everything that he envisioned that he wanted to be. So uh, it goes early in his childhood. He talks about like he got in problems with the law when he was young at 15 years old. But then he decided to do a pop punk band. And finally, uh, uh, Song 41 was born. He talks about how he meets uh, Steve-O, who was the drummer for a long time for the band, and how at first he didn't like him. Uh, but uh, someone was going to kick his ass and he intervened and then they became the best of friends. Uh, they go, they talk about like how they formed Sum 41 and his mother told him that he had like two years uh, to do that music thing. And if it didn't pan out, he had to go and get a real job and finish studies. So uh, they talk a lot about like when Sum 41 started in Canada and how they got like an opening slot in a in a festival and they got like the beginning time so they were really excited but they think no one's gonna be there and that's where uh their former manager uh greg nori uh like saw the band and then he started like talking to them that he wanted to produce them but uh for the rest of the band it was cool but uh, a lot of the book says derek uh starts to talk like uh, like a lot uh, uh, how they began to spend a lot of time together. 
So they go for different stories. And there's a story in the book where they're like partying somewhere and they're like in a bath stall together and Greg kisses him. And the thing is, he was 36 year old man and he was like 17 or I don't know, 18 at the time. So he was quite young. So uh, it really paints a picture of like someone who was promised uh, success and was taken advantage of. And I didn't know this about uh, Derek. So I think it's very brave of him to come out and tell these stories. And now I can tell why he had later in life the problems that we had with uh, alcohol abuse and the stint he had where he almost died and uh, had the health problems. But yeah, most of the beginning of the book also talks about how the manager uh, took a lot of the royalties from the band. And there was something very interesting. The song Into Deep, which was a hit for All Killer, No Filler, was actually first written for, for their former manager's band, but it didn't work. And then they gave it to Sum 41, but he kept royalties, even though he didn't write the song. And all of he kept royalties for the band for a lot of the years that he kept being the, their manager until he was fired, I think, in the underclass hero. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. But so that's a whole lot of the focus of the book. Uh, more than I thought that was going to be discussed. But there's also stories about like uh, how they wrote Fat Lip and how like they had the rap part, but you know, the Derek's voice wasn't fit to it. So they used Tebow to do that part. And they talk about how they started, like how they were signed by Death Jam Island, who had no rock bands at the time. And how like, it seemed like, you know, it was straight up through there and they promoted the band a lot. And, you know, the rise to fame, the pop punk, uh, they tell stories of like how uh, Tommy Lee, actually from Motley Crue, was one of his people that most supported him. And they played at a 20th uh, like, uh, anniversary of MTV show, which I remember watching that. And he played drums with them. And then they talk all about like when they were going to do Does This Look Infected? How, and one of the most interesting stories for that is the the hell song. I didn't know what the hell song was about. So apparently the hell song was about this friend that Derek had that growing up, she was like a friend with benefits with him. And uh, she contracted AIDS at some point because of a cheating boyfriend. And that song, he wrote, Derek wrote it like having been tested himself, thinking that he could also get, but it was of the point of view of his friend. So once I learned that story, you know, I remember uh, Does It Look Infected was a more uh, aggressive record than the previous one. The other interesting stories is uh, the album Shot and how they were in the Congo, uh, you know, and they were there because of the UN and they were there to, you know, for a good cause and fighting erupted. And they, they really narrate in the book all the stuff that they went, how they feel for their lives, the PTSD that they had. And they, they obviously say the story about how uh, this uh, shock <laughs> saved them, this man from the UN and how he kept the band alive and how they told him that if they got out of that alive, they would uh, name the album after him. And that was an album that uh, should have been bigger for the band. But then they stayed in the book. The, you know, Derek starts talking in the book about how that album was kind of divisive, even though like it was like the heaviest thing that they'd done and they were very proud of. But it got like very little, less airplay. Uh, it, it had some airplay, but that was like the decline in the band, even though I think it's one of their best records. Then they go uh, with Underclass Hero and how that's the time where uh, he needed to to part ways with Greg and he goes into detail how he told the, the bandmates didn't believe him or what happened and he kept a lot of the abuse and grooming to himself and uh, it, it goes into detail like you know the the manager like I was saying like they they were soulmates and uh, that they he, he he didn't need to fight that he could be bisexual so it's pretty 
pretty strong stuff. And the thing that Derek at that time uh, uh, had to go through all of that and doing the albums, it's, uh, you know, you get a perspective of uh, how much he went through. Then it goes on the, uh, like when he meets Avril Lavigne and uh, their relationship, their rise to fame and their inevitable fall. So apparently uh, a lot of the bandmates hated her. And he even, I didn't know this, but he got so many death threats that the FBI had to intervene and he had to get like a bodyguard. So I didn't know that. So he talks about how some parts of the relationship with her were great, but then uh, they separated and uh, apparently he thought that he had, there were rumors that he had, she, he had cheated, uh, she had cheated on him. So it goes into that decline and how he divorces and then he starts to party again, uh, take a lot of drugs and and do more alcohol. And there, like I think the most interesting story in, in the book involves Paris Hilton and Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots. At that time, uh, more Velvet Revolver. And, uh, you know, Derek, at a, at a, there's a part where he, before he married Avril Lavigne, he dated Paris Hilton for a while. Uh, so, you know, he, he talks about crazy stories with her, uh, but he also talks like he kept being friends with her and talked with her on the phone where where her sex tape was leaked and he was sad for her for what happened. But the story with Scott Weiland is they were at a party somewhere and they were all doing a lot of drugs and apparently the cops showed up. So Derek thought that it was a good idea if they all got to bed together and they said that they were in an orgy and they would leave them alone. But Scott Weiland was so out of his mind that he started taking his pants off. And Derek went like, no, it's not, it's not a real orgy. It's just pretend. So I thought that was that was like a, a fun story uh, in the book. Uh, then it goes like how the band got a lot of turmoil and they were beginning to be uh, less favorites with uh, after Underclass Hero tanked. Uh, it was just downhill from them. Uh, it talks about his th decline in friendship with Stebo, how he got more like violent and dismissive to him, and how like it seemed like the band weren't getting along, and how albums like Screaming Bloody Murder, uh, who they thought was a pretty cool album, just nobody cared. And after that, six years without an album, then 13 Voices. Uh, they did that in 2016. Uh, they talk about when Steve-O left the band in 2014. Then he talks about, you know, when he goes into rehab, his second marriage with a model. Uh, there's also, he talks about how his uh, wife uh, almost committed suicide. Uh, so he talks about that a little bit. And uh, he says in a part in the book that he actually played with Linkin Park, the catalyst, uh, uh, after, you know, long time after uh, we lost Chester and how that got him to think about his own wife's almost suicide. So maybe that's where the rumor came that he would be Linkin Park singer, but no. So I thought that was interesting. And then he talks about how after like all those years of like doubting himself and going into rehab, he found that he wanted to get the band together. And he talks about Dave uh, Jordan, who was one of the guitar players that left Come Back. So their comeback album, uh, 13 Voices, uh, did a little bit better. But in 2019, Order in Decline was an album that fared better with them. But then they talk about how then the pandemic came. But that was a great time for Derek. So he could finally like get more clean and think about what he was going to do. And that's when he started writing their last album, Heaven and Hell. And he started writing like more pop punk again. And that was, was pretty interesting. Also, another of the stories that was interesting is that I didn't know that Song 41 actually played in an Iggy Pop album. So he talks about meeting Iggy Pop and how he was like so surprised that Iggy Pop would want to do a, a, a record with Song 41. So the the book finishes with him talking about how he came to the conclusion that this new album, Heaven and Hell, 
was going to be the, the last album. It had the pop punk side and the metal side because they were a band that played with punk bands, metal bands. So this was an album that had the two styles that they've been known for. And he felt like invigorated again, but he also became a father at the time. So he was thinking like, ah, how, how long can I do this? So then he decided and he told the bandmates that it was go good to go out on top. So they, uh, he said that they would do one last tour and finish. So all of that is covered in the book. But yes, if you think it's all stories about drugs and sex, yes, there's some stories, wild stories about antics, about what they do. But to me, this book is more about a cautionary tale about a young musician uh, having to overcome a sexual predator and drugs and alcohol and basically coming out at the end victorious because they did focus a lot on that part, which I thought that was not going to be the focal point of the book. And as the book dropped, uh, Derek had to do a video uh, because Greg, uh, their former manager, was saying that it's all lies, that he this that he's saying never happened. And Derek says, like, you know, I would go to court. And actually, uh, in the book, it says that in 2019 or 2018, at what point he sued uh, his former manager for royalties uh, because, you know, he had gotten too much from the band. He claimed that he wrote songs that he didn't write to get more money. So it's it's very interesting. And also at the end, uh, they talk about how he uh, sold his uh, the rights of the music to Song 41. And then he writes Landmines, which was a hit and is on the newer album. So, yeah, I think in conclusion, you know, this is a very interesting book. Uh, there's some parts that I thought, like when he talks about like the grooming stuff and stuff that happened with him, you know, it's pretty, uh, it's not easy to listen to it. And I was reminded of that series, Baby Reindeer, uh, when the main character is also groomed by someone uh, that in the comedian industry say trying to make him better and promising him things and giving him drugs uh, because that's what happened to Derek. So I thought that it reminded me a little bit of that. But yeah, there's some funny stories in it. So it's not all, do all gloomy stories. You know, there's some fun stuff. And he also talks a lot about like what he has learned about the music industry in the time that he has being in it. So uh, I thought it was, a, you know, it was a good memoir. And I thought that it, it had some difference to some other memoirs where they just focus on like, uh, this is not The Dirt by Motley Crue. It's not all talking about all the debauchery. Uh, there's some soul and some character to this book. So I quite enjoyed it. So I want to know from you, Couchers, what did you think of Walking Disaster, uh, the book by Derek Whibley? Have you read it? If not, uh, you can read it. It's in an audio book and you can listen to it. That's what I did. Uh, it's like eight and a half hours of time to listen to it. So hopefully I can get to listen or read more books and do more chilling with a book. So I want to know from you, Couchers. Comment down below. Give me a like if you like this video. And, you know, share with other people so I can get to more people like yourself. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so and ring the bell. So you can get notifications when I upload videos. And uh, if you haven't seen my review, I did review the last album by Song 41, Heaven and Hell. I'm going to put it somewhere around here so you can watch that review. So until next time, Couchers, this is Hector, the shield dude on a couch. And I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.